All right, we are live. Thank you, Laurel, for being here. Um, I wanted to start by um, introducing myself. I am Lawrence Muller, NIDA's Senior Director of Program. And we have here today Laurel from Crisis Text Line. Um, and so I just wanted to give a little introduction to you. Uh, thank you, Laurel, for being here. Laurel is the growth marketing manager at Crisis Text Line, where she works to make sure people have access to mental health support at their fingertips. She is also an award-winning filmmaker for her documentaries about chronic illness and body image, and she recently finished her Master's of Social Work at Columbia University. New York City is her home for now, but she's always and forever a Midwesterner at heart. So welcome, Laurel, and we're so happy that you're here representing Crisis Text Line. Um, we've had a really strong partnership with you guys for several years now. Um, I think many people know, but if you don't, you can always text NEDA to 741741, and Crisis Text Line is then notified about um, our partnership and that you guys have um, come to Crisis Text Line for support through NIDA, and that always alerts the volunteers on Crisis Text Line that there's people who are coming from um, a place of eating disorders. So welcome, and thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and talk a little bit about kind of what we're seeing in the world right now. and. Um, we're always just so grateful for your partnership and happy we can help people together. So thanks for inviting me. Great. And um, so today, as you mentioned, we do want to talk a little bit about Crisis Techland and what you guys have been seeing in the world of COVID-19 um, and just kind of figuring um, and sharing a little bit with us about what um, trends you guys have seen from people who are contacting um, Crisis Text Line and, and making use of your resources. Definitely, and I think um, I'll start a little bit by providing a context of what happens when you do text crisis text line and then kind of dive into what we're seeing because of that. So basically anybody who's in crisis and with any kind of crisis can text 741741 and be connected with a volunteer crisis counselor. Now we at crisis text line don't define what that is or what crisis means. We always say if it's a crisis to you, it's a crisis for us. Um, so really, if you text us, you'll be connected with someone who can help you work through anything you're going through. Um, it's probably not surprising that we're seeing a huge influx of texters right now with everything that's um, going on in the world. So at some point last week, we had about double the texter volume. Right now, we're still um, we're still kind of high on texture volume, but it's it's uh, becoming more, you know, more manageable. We're always set up to be able to scale really easily. So we were um, excited to kind of dive in and help people right now. Um, but really what we've seen overall is an influx in anxiety. And um, we, when kind of the pandemic started hitting America and the United, continental United States, we anticipated that it would happen in kind of two waves. The first wave would be people becoming incredibly anxious about the future and what's going on in the world. And then the second part would really be the um, impact of isolation. So um, we have seen that. We've seen actually in our data, it's mirrored what we anticipated, which was initially um, we saw a really big influx of people reaching out about immediate anxiety. Uh, things that came up in what we were calling phase one were top words like paranoid or anxious. Um, texters were started really worried that they were um, possibly going to contract the virus and started mentioning symptoms and uh, also started mentioning things like, I have asthma, um, I don't know if my asthma or allergy symptoms are similar to COVID, How sh what should I be worried about? Um, and, and heightened anxiety around physical safety and, and anxiety about that present moment. As we know, what, hap what happened in the world was we moved pretty quickly from, you know, people should stay home to actually everybody needs to stay home. And now we're starting to see a lot more of text messages around um, loneliness, isolation, feeling alone in all of this. Um, and really what's, what's kind of come out of this, which I think we can get to later is, we've also seen a lot of great coping mechanisms. So um, when you text crisis text line, uh, we um, anonymize the data and um, create, are able to, because we have such a high volume of people texting us, 
glean insights into A, what people are talking about, so the words that I mentioned, and also what's working and what helps. So, um, you know, I think later in the conversation we can talk a little bit about like some takeaways of what's working, but really I think the cursory overview is right now we're seeing a lot of anxiety. People are very, very anxious. Um, and it, we're moving from this state of uncertainty about the future to feeling very alone and isolated, um, given the present situation. Yeah, and I think you mentioned so one of the benefits of our partnership is that we have insight into the NIDA community and the people who are reaching out from NIDA. Can you share a little bit about how, um, how, that, how our community is responding as well? Yeah, definitely. So, um, like you said, basically when um, someone texts us and indicates that they they use NEDA, we know that they have been in contact with you in the past. Um, and we're able to kind of build a data set around this is what people who have been in contact with you in the past and then contact us um, have to say. And we're able to compare that to the broader crisis text line community. So one thing that I think is really interesting is um, Broadly within Crisis Text Line, we are now seeing anxiety be the number one um, issue that people reach out to us about. Um, at some point last week, I think it was um, in the, it was, it was really high, it was like 78% of, of conversations were about related to anxiety. Overall for the month, we're about 40%, we're actually 39.5% about anxiety. What's interesting, though, is that when you break that down into the NIDA um, subset of conversations, that's really on track with how the NIDA community is responding. So right now, about 31% of conversations using the NIDA keyword um, are about anxiety. What this says to me is that, um, you know, just like we say anything that's a crisis to you is a crisis for us, really the world is experiencing, experiencing things very, very similarly right now. Um, you know, we all have our own trauma that we're dealing with. We all are dealing with different, um, are approaching the situation with different access to different means, access to different resources, a different context of how you've historically um, dealt with trauma, but really it's driving a lot of the same emotions regardless where you, of of how you're kind of coming into this situation. I also think I was just being a bit of a nerd and digging into the NIDA data this morning and um, found some texter feedback um, that I thought was is really kind of like indicative of what um, kind of I think how the world is feeling right now. And someone said, I'll just like paraphrase, but it was basically um, thank you. So to our crisis times, crisis counselors, thank you. A lot of my friends are going through the same thing right now, and it feels hard to talk to them about it because I know that they're going through the same thing. And I think um, it really highlights two things. One, that uh, we're all in this together. <laughs> like, we're all really feeling the pressures of all of this, but also that, like, Crisis Text Line is a resource, and if you are in crisis and you need to talk to someone and you feel like you can't talk to someone else, like you can always text 741741 and someone who does have the capacity in the moment to help you will be there to help you. Um, and, and I think those two things in, in context are, are just really important to keep in mind as we're all navigating this new and adjusted world. Yeah, and I think it's really, it's amazing and we're so grateful for the partnership because we know that you guys are such a great resource for people especially in the moment, and you guys are 24-7 and just really a, a resource for people whenever they need it. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about the coping, coping mechanisms because you've mentioned that, you know, people are really expressing a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of uncertainty here. Um, and, and so, you know, what coping mechanisms have people found success for? What are, what are lots of people doing right now? Yeah, the primary and most important thing is really time frame. So particularly when we're seeing events like this, it can be easy to go down the rabbit hole of like, how long will this go on? When will things get back to normal? Um, and spiral into this, um, this is a forever thing. The most important thing is really keeping in context um, what is happening right now. So what can you do to make tomorrow better or to make today better or to even make the next five minutes better? And sometimes that's as simple as like listening to a song that is really, um, you know, really like lifts you up or watching a TV show that you really enjoy or FaceTiming a friend. 
but really the most important thing is thinking about like what is happening right now and are you okay right now um and just keeping all of that in context instead of spiraling down down the road my my mom is not a crisis counselor but she always says um as we start to talk about it she'll always be like let's take a step step back and let's say you know like are you okay right now and if you're okay right now then you're okay right now <laughs> um and and keeping that in check um the other thing is really keeping a routine and a schedule you know um i think this is like a it's something we're seeing effective in our data. It's also something I think we're seeing being talked about a lot in the media of like, it is still important to get up at a, you know, maybe you don't need to get up as early as you normally would, but at a reasonable time, um, shower, brush your teeth, uh, you know, have a structure to a day and a schedule that makes you feel comfortable and um, like you have some sense of, um, a routine in your life, especially when so many things about your routine have suddenly stopped. Um, so creating a, a routine that works for you for this moment and sticking to it is really important. Um, the other is, even though we're all, um, you know, socially, physically distant, social relationships are really, really, really important. Um, and we're seeing them be important now more than ever. So leaning on friends, leaning on family members, um, reaching out to coworkers for support is all um, something we're seeing really effective. We're actually seeing mom, the word mom, pop up in conversations far more than we usually would. Um, and I mean, you, we're also seeing it be overwhelmingly positive. So, so. Um, moms you're doing something right right now um and then finally it's finding activities that you enjoy so i kind of talked about this earlier but especially when we're thinking about like keeping things in time frame um some of that means like finding something that you can do in the moment that is comforting and supportive so that can be every anything from like playing video games with your friends online to doing a puzzle with your family at home um, and remote finding ways to um, do the things that you enjoy while staying safe and in your home. Um, well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes to talk to uh, me and our community about um, what Crisis Text Line is seeing and what resources you guys have and um, what others are doing to, to cope with the situation. Um, just one more time, want to let people know that if you text NEDA and EDA to 741741, um, then they will know that you guys came from us and um, can provide you with all of the crisis support that you're looking for. So thank you. Thanks so much for having me. We're always, always happy to support you and help people with y'all. So thanks, Laurel. Good afternoon. <laughs> Bye.